Welcome back to another episode of Black Hat Python. In this one, we are creating a subdirectory brute forcing tool, which is something that is very prevalent in CTFs and even real world uh, web app assessments because um, you're going to want to know what hidden files and folders exist on a web server. And most likely, a lot of the you guys watching, you're probably familiar with and probably have some experience using tools like GoBuster, uh, maybe DuraSearch, DuraBuster, you know, Ferox Buster most recently. Whatever your go-to is, uh, there's tons of tools out there to do this. But it's always good to know how to create this on your own because maybe you are on an engagement where you need to run this uh, in some kind of environment where you don't have access to pulling down these scripts from GitHub and you might be having to create your own stuff. And even if you're never in that scenario, just having the understanding is going to make you better at Python and is also going to give you, you know, more insight into how these things are developed and how you can make use of them. So here we go. We are going to start off this script here by setting all the variables that we might want to go and change later at the top. So it's very accessible. It's very easy. You don't want to go digging through uh, the script if we want to adjust this for another application, another circumstance, right? So in this particular scenario here, and now this is an alternative way to do it, right? Another way we could write this is have some command line input to specify values. You know, that's something you see in all the commercialized or all the, um, all the popular brute force uh, subdirectory tools out there. But I guess maybe for the sake of uh, simplicity and having it not be that many lines, the authors of this book decided to just put them as variables at the top and you could change it at any moment. But yeah, you could easily port this into something that has some different command line flags, you know, different values, you know, where you can dynamically, um, based off what the user inputs, uh, do something, you know, run it against a different word list, different uh, target, things like that, different amount of threads. But we just put it up here, so we're going to be running this against this test.php vulnweb.com website, which is like a test PHP website that uh, the author recommends running this on. Of course, you could, if you're doing this for a CTF, you want to use it in a CTF, you could just as easily adjust the target here. In this case, we're going to be brute forcing against .php, looking for backup files, origin, inc files. And uh, I'm going to be using my go-to word list right here. You can use any word list you want, obviously. We're also going to be trying to simulate uh, a normal user agent, a so a Firefox one in this case. So that is why we have this user agent here. So on to the code. Let's start with the main functions, typically the way I like to do these things here. And so the first thing we're going to do is be calling get words, which is this function up here. And it will return a uh, variable called words. <clears throat> and so uh, we will set words equal to words down here, the global variable words, right? And then we will print, press enter to continue. Now, what is get words doing, right, before we continue on? Well, what get words is going to do is it's going to actually go through your word list, okay? And... Uh, by default, resume will be set equal to none. And uh, where it is called down here, we are just calling it, you know, directly from the main function. And uh, what it's going to do is we're going to define a function within this function. This one's called extend words. But right when the, the function is called, uh, it's not going to immediately run this, right? Not until it's called. So we'll start here with open word list as f. And so basically it's going to read in this, uh, you know, wherever the full path to your word list is, right? In my case, the raft small words dot text. And what it's going to do is it's going to read the entire file and assign it to this variable called raw underscore words. Basically the reason it's called this is we're going to do some, uh, we're going to do some modifications to this word list. Uh, and this is just the word list as it is in your file. That will be raw underscore words. And uh, we're going to set found resume equal to false. And then we will add, we will create a words queue 
Okay, if you watched the previous video where we did this mapper script here, you should be familiar with uh, setting up these queues, right, to do the Python multi-threading. So that's basically what's happening here. This is going to be a multi-threaded application. So within here, we will say forward in raw words dot split. We're going to call a dot split just to uh, help format things properly, make sure it's in the format we would expect. And uh, from here, what we're going to do is, if resume is not none, then um, we will say found resume and then call extend words passing in that word. So extend words is going to check if there is a, a dot in the word, right? Like if it's a file basically, because if you have a directory, it you know there will be no file extension. And so, um, we'll do a words dot, you know, if, if there, if it is a file, we'll do a words dot put. So basically adding this item right here to the words queue that we initialized down here, we will put slash and then the name, because in that case it is a file. So we want to say slash and then the file name, right? And if it doesn't, then we're going to assume that it's a directory. So we're going to add to the queue. Uh, just the, you know, slash name of the directory slash, right? So that way we can distinguish between files and directories. And then uh, for extension in extensions, right? This is our extensions uh, Python list up here. So for each extension in this, we will add to the queue the word plus the extension. So we want to queue everything up to go through the entire word list looking for all of these extensions, so we want to look for all of the things as, um, you know, directories or files, everything, right? So this is going to help build it out for us. And uh, so that's what happens if we find resume. Um, and then the next condition we'll check for, if we say we don't find resume, we'll say uh, else if the word is equal to resume, then we will set it to tr uh, found resume to true and then say resuming the word list. That way we can actually, um, we can resume this thing if we want to. Um, but yeah, if that's not set, then it will just start uh, from scratch. And uh, so else, the else condition here will be to print the word and then call, uh, you know, pass the word into the extend words function. So basically, uh, at the end, it'll return words um, to that variable. But this right here is what's going to actually display it in the console, as you'll see when I run this here in a second. And uh, yeah, it will also return these words, and that's going to be assigned to the words uh, global variable down here. And so after it shows all the words that we're about to brute force against in the word list and you know the user can have a look for themselves and then press enter when they're ready to get started which this this part is a little bit different than what you're probably used to with stuff like gobuster it normally doesn't do this um, so this is something that you can have print out for you and press enter or you could just remove all this uh remove the print and remove the press enter part maybe i'll demo that as well just show you uh, a way that you're probably more familiar with, let's just say. But after that happens is when uh, the brute forcing, as we know it, actually happens. So what it's going to do is going to read, uh, you know, it's going to read the line of, of pressing enter. You know, that's all this is. This is basically a part of a part of this here. Press enter, then it's going to read that they press enter and then continue to this next line here. This is where the actual program lives right here. So for this throwaway variable in range threads, right? We built out the threads. That's what was the most important part about this is building out these threads. Now that we have them built, we can say threading.thread and say the target is equal to der bruter, which is a function we're going to cover here in a second. And the args is equal to words and then threads, uh, thread.start. So Der Bruder is right here. It takes one argument words. That's why we have the args uh, words. So that was this variable here that got returned and stored in here. So this is the variable specifically that we're passing in. This words right here gets passed in to the Der Bruder function. And uh, now we can just say, hey, 
Remember this he- this agent we created? Yeah, we want to use this as the header, uh, the user agent header rather. And then uh, while not words dot empty, so this is this dot empty is part of the um, the queue uh, the queue thing that we imported here for the multi threading. So we're gonna say, hey, as long as there are um, words, as long as there's items in this words queue, run this code here. And so the code is going to be setting the URL and the URL will just be the target plus uh, the words. And we're going to have to say words.get because these are all items in the words queue. So we're going to have to get the items from the queue. So we would use this uh, .get method here. And then um, if you notice, yeah, the target is like just the base URL. Basically, it's the base URL plus the, you know, this here, right? The actual word from the word list. So that's how we'll build these out. And we're going to try, we're going to add some error handling in here. We're going to try doing a request.get, you know, to do the get request on the URL, which is this full URL, right? And passing in, of course, our, our headers. And uh, if we do get an error, it's most likely going to be request.exceptions.connection error. And in that case, we'll just write um, X to the console and then flush that out and continue on. So here's where we can add the nice stuff to determine wh which uh, files and folders are accessible, which is the whole point of the brute forcing subdirectories, right? So we're gonna say, hey, uh, we can check the status code from request but just by doing an r dot, uh, dot status code. And this is something that's just part of the request module. Um, so obviously if it's a 200, it's a 200 okay, right? Um, we're just gonna print out the status code and the URL. And I actually modified this code from the book ever so slightly to add in uh, an import of term color because I like, I think it, I really like having this uh, show up as green when we can when we found it i feel like it really makes it stand out more especially since we're writing other things um like um as you'll see here in a second uh these periods here even x's in some cases uh, i really like um for my 200 okays to stand out so i chose to import the term color and I'll, that's why i use c print here for a colored print and i'll print it in green it's just a preference of mine but uh, it's gonna first check if it's a 200 status code else. If it's a 404, then we'll just write a dot to the screen. Obviously, it's gonna be a lot of 404, so it's just a way to know that, hey, it didn't hang or anything. It's running, it's just getting 404s, right? So it's gonna keep writing dots. That's what that means. And then else, like if you get a 403 or a 301 redirect or whatever, right? We're just gonna print out that specific status code. That's how the authors chose to do it. Of course, you could expand to this um, to this script as well as any script that we do in this project to handle more cases and to make it more robust and all that. But for now, we're just going to log any of the other uh, status codes to the console and call it a day there. And uh, yeah, that's pretty much it. So it's going to keep running it for every item in uh, the words queue which we built out in the beginning. So yeah, let's run it as it is right now and I'll make a slight modification on it, run it again. So I will just run it right here, brooder.py. And uh, it's probably gonna prompt me for credentials, just kind of being slow at the moment. Here we go. See, here it is, it, it built out the entire word list and uh, we can just press enter to continue or we could just check out some of the words in here, but press enter and then it gets started right away. See, I chose to uh, print these as green. Um, I didn't have to, but yeah, you see immediately all these dots are 404s every time you see a dot there. And uh, yeah, we have like a, a number of ones. We could actually just control click to open one of these up, for example. Um, that's interesting. That one gave me a 200, but it was actually a 404. So you might have some cases like that. Um, if, uh, depending on the website you run this against, right? I try another one here. And, oh, looks like this is being appended. That's why it said 404, it copied an extra character. Okay, so yeah, it, it didn't mess up. It was just, um, I it ended up copying uh, this uh, closing parentheses here. 
So, yeah, these are actually all legitimate 200s in that case, right? So I'll just get rid of this last thing here, and there you go. Awesome. Interesting. <laughs> There's a lot of interesting files in here. I won't get sidetracked too much, though. Let me just kill this one here. So another way we can do this, if you want to use this script, make the script a little bit more what you're used to, uh, one modification we can make is to uh, simply comment out this print statement um, not here, but, um, this one on line 35, we can comment this one out and then we can also go down here and, uh, I believe we can comment out both of these and just run it and it should just start straight away. It shouldn't ask us for anything. So let's try that. Yeah. And there you go. And now it just starts right away as um, you're used to with these types of things. So just showing you how you can make some simple modifications. And if you're interested in OSCP, there's a lot of uh, scenarios where you need to make little modifications like that. It really pays to understand like, what your code is doing and be able to make uh, little modifications on the fly. As I always say, almost nothing works out of the box on OSCP. So, you know, this very relevant to uh, be able to modify scripts. So, wanted to throw that in there for you guys as a little bonus. So hopefully this video has helped you guys. If it has, be sure to subscribe to the channel, hit the like button as well. It certainly helps me out in the algorithms, getting the message out there. And if you're eager to catch up on this series, because we have gotten pretty far at this point and we've gotten to some really cool uh, scripts here. So yeah, check out the videos on screen in that case. Uh, Black Hat Python, definitely recommend it. And I'll see you guys right over there. Thanks for watching.